Hi, Books as Bad as Twilight listeners. Danielle here, and I want to tell you about Anchor. Do you want to create a podcast? Anchor is the easiest podcast tool to do so. Let me explain. First off, it's free. Yes, you heard me correctly. Anchor has creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer, and they will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more. You can even make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. To get started, download the free Anchor app or visit anchor.fm today. She's reclusive, a mystery. She communicates in type. A family trip was planned with the Antarctic in sight. One day she's gone, disappeared without a trace. It's up to her daughter, a reality to face. An enigma to solve. B was dead set. Where, Where did, did you, you go, go, Bernadette? Cool. Cool? All right. Let me see real quick. Okay. Okay. Shall we just get into it? I guess so. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to season four. You know where we are? Where are we? Right here at the Books as Bad as Twilight podcast. Oh, my God. Woo! <sighs> it's my funny, because what are we reading, Oh, Danielle? Well, folks, for season four, you voted for Where'd You Go, Bernadette by Maria Semple. Mm-hmm. And let me tell you. <laughs> what are you going to tell me, Danielle? <laughs> well... You and the audience. I'm sure some of the audience are like, what? This book? But no book is off limits on the Books as Bad as Twilight podcast. Mm-mm. So, Oh, you could get it on Kindle for $8. That's pretty cheap. That actually is pretty cheap. So, hey, go ahead and get that. Or just go to Audible. Oh, yeah. Is Audible. It- Who are sponsoring us? Yes. Visit audibletrial.com slash B-A-B-A-T for your free 30-day trial and a free audiobook of your choice. Choose where to go, Bernadette. We're going to get into that more in the middle of the episode. Mm-hmm. But yes, we are talking about Where'd You Go, Bernadette, a book that I think many people would be shocked to see that we are reading. But alas, we are reading it. You know what's really like turns me off about a lot of um, books that are like on bestsellers and stuff like that? Yes. When there are a ton of fucking reviews um, from like, like acclaimed people and yeah. shit. Um, and there are a there ton. are a ton on Amazon. My God, mm-hmm. they what I've seen most about this book is a lot of the reviews just say it's very funny. I but hope it's, it's funny. Mm-hmm. And I'm it's interesting. Oh God, I hope it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, me too. I I have a hard time with humor in books. I tend to not. I tend to miss it a lot. Oh, NPR reviewed this book, and Look, NPR, NPR has such a dry humor. NPR is not the end all be all though, let's be honest. And like, also I I I am a subscriber to NPR. Me too. Like it's one of the only things I I put a lot of money into. Mm-hmm. Cuz I believe in public radio. Me too. Um <laughs> but I have to say <laughs> they are very NPR-ish. Oh my god, they are. <laughs> like yeah, NPR it's true. Yeah. Is very NPR. <laughs> very NPR, what can you say? <laughs> You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> Wait, there I go. I said it again. I know. You need it. I can't help stop. it. I have to. It's my personality. I have to say it. Yeah, so we're reading this book. It's uh, 335 pages long. Mm-hmm. Um, it is in audio version. Yes. Uh, we recommend it. I am probably going to get this in audio when uh, rereading it, only because I hope it makes it better. I hope and it, it makes might, it better. And it might, actually, yeah. I'll probably do both. Like, read it and then listen to it. Yeah, so do you want me to go ahead and start reading this summary? Yeah, go for it. All right, so when 15-year-old... Oh, B. B. Oh, what did we say? Brie. Oh, shit. We'll have to fix that. Our introductions. Yeah, that's okay. We'll fix... I'll have to look. Okay. Yeah, let's just keep it. Ha, 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 ha. Hey, I was drunk the last intro. We can keep Brie in this fucking one. True, yeah. Oh no, our credibility. <laughs> oh please, I was gone out the window a long time ago. All right, when fifteen-year-old B, we claims- didn't even remember the names of like fucking Clea and Renee or whatever their names. That's true. Are. That's true. When- 
So I'm going to talk a little about this book. It was published in August 14th, 2012 Mm -hmm. by Little Brown and Company. And go ahead. All right. So so when 15-year-old B claims a family trip to Antarctica as a reward for perfect grades, her fiercely intelligent but agoraphobic mother, Bernadette, Mm -hmm. throws herself into preparations for the trip. Worn down by years of trying to live the Seattle life she never wanted, Bernadette is on the brink of a meltdown. As disaster follows disaster, she disappears, leaving her family to pick up the pieces, which is exactly what B does, weaving together emails, invoices, and school memos to reveal the secret past that Bernadette has been hiding for decades. And she's agoraphobic. Yeah, that's interesting. She wouldn't even go to the Antarctic. That's interesting. Yeah. And not well, even maybe... though, like, dive planning into it. Well, I was going to say she might be more optimistic than she actually is. No. That... No, I mean, like, I... Um, not that this is realistic, but I watch, there's a show called Shameless that has a, ag- how do you say that? Agrophobic. Agrophobic character who takes like therapy to try to go outside and how it worked was that she would always like get so excited to go out. But then when it actually came to going out, she couldn't do it. And mm-hmm. she, like, so her daughter was going to a wedding and she got a dress and everything and she was going to go out and she's like, all right, I'm going out. And her yeah. daughter was standing there like, mm-hmm, and then she starts to go out and she just couldn't do it like yeah take a step back so i could see like planning for it and then not doing it i i guess we'll get into it and see i I don't have agoraphobia so do i i actually have what's the fear of crowds would that uh, claustrophobia that's 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 different that's closed spaces i have a fear of crowds interesting like if it's like i'm fine in it like but i've had multiple panic attacks Mm. at concerts and stuff like that because if it's too tight corners i've read too many stories about people being crushed in um stampede like situations especially at sporting events because those people are fucking nuts at soccer and they all like storm the field and they get pushed against like gates and stuff like that did you know that like back in the day when there's like fires and stuff like that before they um had out that side doors swinging outward they used to swing inward like at like movie theaters and stuff like that and so when there was a fire and everyone rushed to the exit more people died being crushed to death than by the fire because everyone's pushing against the door and they can't pull the door open so people could go out Oh, my God. So people were just crushing themselves and trampling over one another. Yeah. And that's why I'm scared of crowds. <laughs> but that's understood. Yeah, that's definitely yeah. understandable. I can. So I. Oh, I, my, stomach, my stomach is turning. Think of it. Yeah. I. <sighs> so I'm not, it's not a crowd thing for me. I am. I'm just claustrophobic. So if it is a big crowd and it's very. It's just like the claustrophobia of it. Yeah. Like the feeling that like, oh, my God. <laughs> like, Tight spaces. Don't you, you don't have an out. Yeah, and I never was like that until I got older. I was actually trampled once. (laughs) Were you? Not, like, severely. Obviously, here I am. But uh, when we were kids, we used to go to the playground. And I I don't know if my brothers remember this, but um, it was always a group of kids, and we always went on the merry-go-round. And when we were young, like, you... A couple kids would hold on to the rail, everyone mm-hmm. else in the middle, and you ran around the circle right. to push everyone to go faster. Well, one time I tripped while I was pulling everyone around, yeah. and I rolled underneath the merry-go-round, oh and everyone tried to stop. So they were putting their feet down. And oh, my <laughs> God. like me. <laughs> oh, my God. That's terrifying. <laughs> right? All right. So. <laughs> so I don't need years of therapy to know why I don't like that. <laughs> It's like, it's like, yeah, I just can't understand it. You know what, Brittany? That might be the reason. Yeah, that, that was the reason. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, I guess that makes total sense. Oh, my God. That is terrifying. That, that's Eventually, they it slowed down right. and stopped. But still, oh, my God. That, that's terrifying. Because that, that's just scary Like for anybody, especially like a child. Oh, my God. Unless it's a fake memory. But I do remember it. I was going to say, I doubt it. Well... No, I I believe you. I believe it's a real. Oh, thank memory. you. I appreciate. I believe it. you, pretty. All right, so let's dive into this thing. <laughs> yeah. So we have agoraphobic planning a trip for their insanely smart daughter before getting perfect grades. Mm-hmm. Right. So and yeah. How do you feel that this is going to go so far? Before me reading the the reviews. Well, I guess like I am a bit biased in the sense that I've only really heard good reviews of this. You were the first person who 
came to me and said you so you actually started to read this I book. started to read this book because my one of my best friends name is Bernadette I was ah, like oh this will be fun yeah and I started to read it and the the way that it's formatted is like like journal entries you know uh you know when you read someone's journal has like the date this is what I did today it's kind of very similar in the fact that there's not actual there's not a lot of like interactions like third person interaction you are reading pieces of letters and emails and cases and um conversations bernadette's having with their secretary like via email and stuff like that so it's it's clunky Mm, there's not a not a smooth flow of information it's clunky okay interesting yeah and i'll and i'll say like See, you're giving me more information than I knew about it to begin with because, like I said, all I really know are, like, the good reviews. I've heard it's been rated very well. Mm -hmm. That's literally it. Like, just reading the summary now. Like, I've read the summary before and I totally missed the fact that she was agoraphobic. This is Mm -hmm. the first time I actually Mm -hmm. recognized that. So, like, I'm like, okay. How old old is B? I think 15? 12? Um, 15. 15. Okay. I, in my mind, she was 12. Yeah. So, um... At 15, okay. Yeah, there's a mystery and she wants to solve it. Yeah. I could see that. Yeah. At first I thought it was a 12-year-old and it turned me off. Mm. Oh, interesting. Okay. So, too young. Too young to be solving mysteries. Right. Interesting. Yeah. I think it's interesting, by that summary, it's up to the 15-year-old to rally her family together. Yeah. Why isn't it the father? Yeah. Maybe something's going on there. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Well, I think also, I don't know if this book would be quite as... Uh, what's the word? I'm just going to use the word unique because I can't think of the right word. Uh, but there's another book, maybe you've heard of it, called House of Leaves. I've heard of it. I haven't read it, though. Okay, yeah. Do you know anything about it other than just hearing Vaguely. it? Vaguely. Isn't it horror? I don't know what the genre is. All I know is that it's basically challenging the form of the novel. It has, like, it's written, on, like, I don't know. I haven't read it, but okay. I think, like, some points, they, it's like you're reading an encyclopedia with all these footnotes. There's oh, guess images. what? images. There's yeah. footnotes in this. Oh, I'm sure there are, yeah. And so I'm wondering if it's like that, except like I'm flipping through it and it looks like a typical normal book. You flip through House of Leaves and it's intense. So oh. I think this is maybe like the oh, tamer yes. version. Yes, yes, yes. And there's like poetry pieces. Yeah. Yes. I've seen the, I've seen passages of House of Leaves. Yeah. House of Leaves is intense. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see if this is kind of no, like... No, I don't think it's going to be that extreme. Well, not that extreme, but I mean like in the same vein, kind of challenging mm-hmm. the form of the novel. Okay, okay. Um, But well, I guess we'll get to that. But why don't we go ahead and read reviews, Brittany? All right, we're going to start with... Should we start with five star or one star? Let's start with five star. Five star? Yeah, All right, and then, then we'll, we'll go to one star, star. Then. Yeah, we like to go to the extremes. Yes, we do. Uh, five and one. So- wow, that's a lot. <laughs> um, here we go. Right. This is on Amazon, and it was in October 2nd of 2017, so pretty recently. Mm. This is a very different, entertaining novel about an unusual family. The members of the family are all highly gifted, and I believe you might be able to understand some of the references better if you're a bit of a geek. Okay. I found the pace of the book to be very good. I do not like that uh, to get bogged down with overly long descriptions. This maintains your interest from beginning to end with an interesting blend of personalities. I enjoyed the way the story was told through, through written communications. I highly recommend it. Okay. Yeah, okay. Interesting. Okay. okay. Um, this one is from a 2018, actually a couple months ago. Mm. I resisted reading this book for years, despite all the positive uh, critic reviews, because I just thought it had to be overhyped. I was wrong. I finally got around to reading it last year and found it original, charming, and funny. Apparently, it's just not for everyone based... Oh, not for everyone, because two of my friends to whom I recommended it... um could not get quote get into it however bernadette was without a doubt the best book i've read all year in fact i'm reading it right now different strokes right like different strokes of different folks so how are you feeling so far about it i mean i'm feeling very conflicted because on the one hand i think challenging the form is awesome but also like 
I, I don't know. I'm just I'm nervous. I, I pers- see we're very mm-hmm. different readers. That, I mean, as we've talked about, like I personally like being a writer. Well, we're both writers, but I like reading. I'm not that big of a writer. Well, I mean, but you write poetry. Like, yeah. But I mean, like what I'm saying, I really like prose. I love reading um, elongated prose. Like the, the writing, I appreciate that so much. And I love these novels mm-hmm. that like so enjoyable to read just what's written on the page it's, it's funny like when we we're writing our introduction mm-hmm. that's where we conflicted right exactly yeah um but you know so i'll be so i might appreciate it for that but i also want a good plot and stuff so mm-hmm. I'm interested. but go ahead so this one is definitely more detailed but does it doesn't seem to give out way much okay. um first and foremost this is supposed to be a mystery novel mm. um born to bright parents after many miscarriages B is a the daughter of so and so and Bernadette Fox, uh, E L G I N Elgin, Elgin, huh, in- interesting Elgin Branch and Bernadette Fo- mm. Fox. Elgin is a Microsoft guru and Bernadette is a world famous architect. To say Bernadette is quirky is an understatement. She changes with the wind, with um, with one exception. She loves her daughter B who has survived many heart surgeries and has become an independent thinker who collected the best of her parents' intellectual genes. She is a problem solver, uh, intuitive, a loner, and really doesn't care about what anyone else thinks, which is quite unusual for a 15-year-old girl. Stuck in Seattle, Bernadette has not adapted to the city or social climbing parents of her new daughter's school. Um... Then it talks about school moms. Mm. She has an opinion, a a partner in Eugene. I'm just going to call him Eugene. Mm. (laughs) (laughs) Um, The neighbors believe Bernadette is crazy and she lives at home um, until one day she disappears. Okay. There is a hilarious um, intervention. Intervention. uh, Inter-V-E-N-T-I-O-N. Yeah. Intervention. That's where... There's a hilarious intervention intervention to commit Bernadette to a private mental hospital so she escapes. Oh. So they want to, like, institutionalize her. Interesting. Okay. Um, So now Brie is on the quest to open up her mother in this heart-stopping satire, uh, one of the original books I've read. Uh, The author did a marvelous job. Doesn't insult the reader. Uh, simple. Can you, read it? Can you read it in a sentence? Uh, the author, what's her last name? Sample. Yeah, Sample. Sample yeah. is so smart. I just wonder why she would approve the inane cover for her book. Oh, so maybe it just means ridiculous, maybe? Or like you said, too simple? Yeah, the, like... offer, the novel author is brilliant satire and should have a cover on a higher plane rather than one that it just look, has a chic look. It does look very chic. Yeah. Okay. I, 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 that's not a good criticism. I don't think to that's me. a good criticism. Yeah. I, I, don't they, you know, you're not supposed to judge a book by its cover. Come on now. <laughs> the only thing I got from that review, other than, you know, some of the plot details. I know. I, I tried to skip over the plot details. Yeah. So we weren't spoiled. Right. It's interesting though, because I forgot that this book is a satire. I did know that. I didn't. Yes, yeah, so a that's, satire of what? Well, I don't know. Maybe mystery novels. Oh, that kind of sucks. Or is it a satire of the social climbing aspect of it? Perhaps. I don't know. Maybe. But maybe we're not supposed to know just yet. But that's why I think where the humor comes from because it's a satire. Now, should sa- I feel that sh- satire should explicitly be known to be a satire? You know, like um. Oh, I guess not, because Alice in Wonderland is a satire. Yeah, so yeah. But that that had to be a satire because it's going directly against the government, you know, and he had to write it that way so it's not so obviously a satire, you know, because he'll be killed for tyranny or treason or whatever it is. So if some if you're making fun of a social issue, I don't think it has to be blatantly obvious right. that it's a satire. But you lose an aspect of it if people think it's real. 
I think that's kind of a risk sometimes yeah. with com with comedy in general. Like like what I what I said a little earlier is that like I'm terrible with comedic writing. I usually don't pick up on it. Yeah. Like like Jane Austen, for example. Like I was reading something the other day. I was day. laughing so hard when the Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. Yeah. Um, with the Which the comedy one? in it. I forget what part, but Well well because like I read something I was reading a book the other day for research for something about like fiction and it talked about Jane Austen and her humor and it did apart from Pride and Prejudice and talked about the humor in her writing. And now and you read it and you didn't see it? No, like I, I like I like I I don't remember reading that one part a little bit. Like I knew like it, she was making fun because I know just like the character she was mm-hmm. talking about. But like when this book explained it, I was like, see, I mean, I did know that. But like that's only because I'm very familiar with Pride and Prejudice now. But upon reading that, like I definitely did not know that. Like Jane Austen has a very particular type of humor that sometimes like I think it's funny, but I don't get it at first. <laughs> like people have to tell me. Yeah. And then I'm like, wow, that's actually really funny. Mm-hmm. I, but I don't. But I'm really bad at picking up on humor. So, like, I don't okay. think I would get it anyway, like, even if it was right in your face. Maybe I went into this book thinking it was more mystery than satire. Maybe. And maybe that's why I didn't like it. Interesting. I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. Do you want to read some bad reviews? Yeah, sure. Okay. Let's bring that up. Well, all the reviews I'm getting are from Amazon.com. Amazon.com. So... Uh, if you wrote that review and you want credit, I'm not reading names because I sometimes they have people's like actual names, mm. and for privacy re- uh, reasons, I don't want to read people's names out loud. Sure. Um, so this one was back in 2015, I guess before the hype of it. Really? Well, I don't see. It's been yeah, so or kind maybe of... mid hype. Maybe, yeah. Well, there are there is a movie coming out. There is a movie. We coming want out. to touch base on that. There is a yeah. movie of this coming out in March next year. I think is it March? I know Either it's two thousand nineteen. Yeah, it's yeah. early in the year, so I'm excited to well, see. Well, we'll see that. Yeah. So this one, um, the title is "I Didn't Like It One Bit." Mm. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I think for me, writing style matters a great deal, and this is that's what threw me off reading it the first time was the writing style. Although I understand the author's purpose for writing the book in the manner in which she did, I cannot stand books written in the book book written in retrospect letter form. Whew, that's a lot. Um, just tell me what the hell happened, man. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> My second uh, reason goes to the absurdity of the story itself. I feel... Like, I just wasted time out of my life on this preposterous story. I am sure there are people in the tech industry like this. However, I do not want to feed into it. I don't appreciate hearing over ad nauseum okay. uh, how great the characters are because they did X, Y, Z. Who cares? This book is neither funny nor sentimental. Okay, interesting. Ad nauseum. What's that mean? I think it's like an over amount, like hearing about their achievements. Oh. Uh, like in, like, abundance. I guess that plays into the satire, though. Right. I would think so, too. So, But I don't see, know. yeah. But the thing is, and I think there's something we've talked about many times on here, whether overtly or, inadver- or inadvertently, is like the fact that, like, reading a book or in seeing any kind of entertainment is very subjective. Yeah. And so that's, I think this is going to be a a more difficult one than any of the others, because I think the flaws or achievements will not be as maybe obvious Mm -hmm. as the other books we've read. Yeah. Because those those other books were YA are definitely YA. This is more of an adult book. Yes. Um, so the problems that we see might not be as easily pinpointed. Well, I wouldn't always put that on YA, though, to be honest. Um, well, but... Yeah, that's true. But YA, it has a tendency to be a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. Uh, and I don't want to say obvious. But I know what you're. Go- yeah. I know yeah. what you're saying, though. You yeah. could you could you could find more issues with YA because of the audience for which it's written. Yeah. And I was going to say, too, like with adult novels, there's so many genres like with yeah. YA. I mean, obviously, there's still the genre, but like YA itself is a genre. And mm-hmm. so it's easier to pick up a YA book and look for, you know, what's you know similar in all the YA books versus adult novels, which tend to range have a wider range. Yeah. So, yeah. 
All right. This one says, I didn't like the characters being written as letters back and forth. Mm-hmm. The chapters. I'm sorry. The chapters being written as letters back and forth. Um, couldn't wait to get to the end of this book. I didn't like the chapters. Uh, Bernadette is such a nutcase. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably what's supposed to be funny about it. I yeah. wonder. Yeah. Well, especially if they're going to try to commit her. Right. Um, help me to understand what is good about this book. I have a PhD in psychology and was not intellectual enough to get anything out of this book. I read it all the way through waiting for it to get good. But to me, it was just a complete snooze fest. Hmm. So that's interesting because I think it's supposed to be also a satire about uh, mental illness. Right. So yeah. for a psycho- uh, someone with a PhD in psychiatry or psychology, I forgot what I read already, <laughs> um, to get nothing out of the mental health aspect of this book is interesting. Yeah. I'm also interested in the fact that it is about mental health. You know, we live in an age where, you know, mental health is being discussed more and more like Mm -hmm. more openly and i think it's interesting that like if this is a satire i wonder obviously we haven't read it yet but i wonder if like people would pick up this book what their reaction would be to the discussion of mental health like is it discussed in a way that is positive negative right like would they Mm -hmm. pick it up and be offended by it if they didn't pick up on the humor like or i don't know see that's why i i I think if this is supposed to be a satire of how we pe- treat people with mental illness. Right. It should be obviously a satire so, because it is such a sensitive subject. Right. So we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And this is the last one I'm going to read of the one star. Okay. Um, I th- thought this book would be so much better based on the reviews. This was the first book in a while that I dragged through to per- determined to get to the end. In the first few pages, the author introduces you to so many new characters, it's hard to keep track. Plus, not all of them are, were important, so not sure why the author felt that they were necessary. As for the main character, I don't feel that I really cared about them. The storyline was baseless and pointless and really uh, really just not that interesting. I had high hopes for this book, uh, but what a letdown. I wouldn't recommend it if you're looking for something to that you'll be excited to pick up and drive into the story and dive into the storyline. Excuse me. Okay. So that first um, thing she said about so many characters being introduced that you didn't know who was important or not, that that's important for the style in which this is written. Right. Because if it is everyday communications, then there's going to be random people. That's going to be something to really pick apart. In the passages. Is, yeah, and it's going to be challenging because, like, this is this is not my forte at all. No. Like this, Yeah, this is kind of a shot in the dark for both of us, I'd mm-hmm. say. So this will be very interesting. Kind of nervous, to I was going to say, your face looks <laughs> very, like, <laughs> apprehensive. I am apprehensive because, I mean, this is a book I've been wanting to read. Not, like, especially. Like, I mm-hmm. have it. You know, I've had it for a little while. Um, but I've never... It's... I've been wanting to pick it up, but it's not like a book that I was excited about. Yeah. But I never expected it to be like this life changing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Life changing. Oh, I'm curious how that's going to fit in your um, criteria of eye opening or whatever it is. That's what I mean. Like I want, I like a book to challenge the way we think challenge, of the novel, thank you. but at the same time, like, well, I guess I don't even know what to say. Cause like, I'm so kind of this book going into it i'm, I'm so proud of you off. for not reading anything I so know. far well it's unusual for you well i'm thinking about like i might do what you were saying like just read it all in one shot and then come back to it mm-hmm. um i don't know what i'm gonna do yet i i don't know yeah. because i know when you read forward mm-hmm. it influences how you speak about it yeah when we do chapter by chapter yeah so i don't know what would be better for you? Yeah. For me, I don't think it influences that much when I speak chapter yeah. to chapter. Yeah. Um, only because, like, for me, for me, I think, like, the over arc, I don't expect things. I take everything at face value. Yeah. So, and you see the whole picture. 
Well, I try, so, but I don't always. I try. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, you see the overarching things yeah, when you so, when yeah. you finish stuff. Yeah. And I, I'm very, well, this is the face value. That's yeah. all I'm going to read it at. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I think that's why it's a little easier for me to read ahead right. and only talk about the first couple chapters. Right. Because it doesn't influence yeah. what I'm looking at right there. Yeah. I, I mean, I want to say, too, like, I know sometimes I'm influenced, but truly speaking, I, I try my best to not be influenced by the end. I mean, maybe it's come across that way, but I truly don't try to let that affect how I read the book. Like, especially Not how like, you read the book, but how you talk about it. Well, even that, like, yeah. I don't, like, I think it kind of came off that way in the beginning of Elixir, but even then, like, I didn't know how it ended. I completely forgot the ending. So, like, I personally... I'm not just, just talking about Elixir, though. Well, like, in Lost in a Book, like, I read ahead, and I definitely, like, my judgments on that book, like, I did not judge like what happened at the ending of the book like i maybe I think we're, we're talking about two different things again <laughs> oh, okay <laughs> yeah i'm not yeah. talking about your judging but the way you're speaking of like when i'm like oh i wonder what xyz if they're going to do xyz oh, I see what you're saying. you would yeah. say well no that doesn't happen and that oh, oh i don't always give that away but yeah i know what you're saying yeah you i'm very good at well, reading your body language you are, and, that's your, true. Well, okay. <laughs> and the way you yeah. say things <laughs> So that's what that's what that's I'm trying true, to, yeah. to present. It's like, well, Brittany, that that might happen. Oh, it might happen. We don't know yet. Oh, well, I know, but we don't know. <laughs> so I'm winking. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. But yeah, no, I see what you're saying. All right. So back to this book. So what else is there to say? I mean, pretty I sure. I don't know. And I'm, I'm going to give it another shot. Mm-hmm. Now that I know it's a satire, I right. might enjoy it a lot more. Yeah. Um, but here we go. God. That was a good way to say it, though. <laughs> I'm not sure. I don't think so. Why do I do that? Do you see <laughs> you, what I just did? You keep looking off to the right yeah, and no one's what? There. <laughs> Why? Like, I don't... I did... Whatever. Feelings right now. Are you... Are you excited? Anxious? Reluctant. Reluctant. Okay. I... Reluctant. Yeah. I'm I'm just anxious. Yeah. Or maybe anxious. I don't know. I'm just kind of... I want to read it, but I'm also like... Eh. Mm. I'm afraid to, like, talk about it. Like, I don't know. Like, I feel like there's going to be so many opinions, and I don't know how I'm going to organize them all. On my of, end. Of on my own end. opinions? Yeah, my oh, own I, opinions. I didn't know if you meant, like, from other people. No. Like, my own opinions. I don't know how I'm going to be able to... Reconcile. It'll be interesting, yeah. So, if you've read this book... Let us know your opinion um, if the writing style helped or harmed mm. um, the way that you interpreted the books. The book. I think books. Is there another uh, one? No, I think this is just that she's written other books, but not to do with this. Yeah. So, yeah. And she wrote for um, Arrested Development. Yes. And I love mm-hmm. Arrested Development. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I really kind of hope it's it's good. <laughs> so what, what that says is that because... That is a bit of a satire. And Ellen, she wrote for and Ellen. Ellen. Yeah, so like, she is a comedy writer. Yeah, so should be interesting. Yeah, with but the very different forms: writing for the TV and writing a book. Mm-hmm. So very interesting. Yeah, oh, you know, also wrote for Ellen. Who? Karen Kilgariff, who is the host of My Favorite Murder, one of my favorite podcasts. Really, she's pretty funny. Yeah. Interesting. Karen Kilgariff. I didn't know who that was yeah. until you told me. So well, there you go. <laughs> All right. All well, right. I think we're done. Yeah, I think so too. So if you are interested in learning more about mm-hmm. our podcast or just, you know, seeing past episodes, what have you, mm-hmm. go ahead and visit our website at www dot b a b a t podcast dot com. Mm-hmm. There we have all our past episodes, links to where you can listen, such as iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, Audible, Podcast Addict, uh, Podcast. Audible. Not yeah. Audible. Why did I say Audible? Well, maybe yeah, Audible. Well, I meant to say Podcast Addict. I right. think we're on Podbean as well. Yes, I think so too. Um, and you can also find our social media mm-hmm. on our website, like Facebook. Twitter, Instagram, mm-hmm. Goodreads, all that mm-hmm. fun stuff. You can leave us a voicemail. You can email us. Mm-hmm. A lot of fun stuff on mm-hmm. our website. It's a great time. Mm-hmm. And is that it? Am I missing anything? Uh, sh- Katie Hartung uh, yes. did our artwork mm-hmm. uh, for all of our logos and shit. Indeed. Uh, our music, again, is by the amazing Kevin McLeod. Kevin McLeod, hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. I'm using your, your music again. This one's called, what, Dark Hallway? I think so. 
<laughs> that's not how it goes at all. No, it's that's not. How, I just went with you. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, listen along with us at Audible. Use uh, audibletrials.com slash B-A-B-A-T. Mm-hmm. Audibletrial.com. Audibletrial. Why don't they yeah, have an close. S? Because they're awesome. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> Audible trials. Come trials on and tribulations. Now. Audible. So it's audibletrial.com <laughs> slash B-A-B-A-T. Uh, you get a free 30 day subscription. You could get um, Where'd You Go? Bernadette off of there, which is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um, also, the parent company Amazon has it for sale for $8 right now. If indeed. You read it. Yes, indeed. Okay. So, which would, this would be very interesting to listen to audibly. I know. So, like, yeah. when they go into the footnotes, do they say footnote one? How do they? How are they going to differentiate? I don't know. Yeah, I don't I'll know. find out. Yeah, I guess I'll so. probably I'll probably listen to this one. I'm definitely interested to hear what that's like. Yeah. Um. All right. Okay. With that being said, farewell, everyone. A vida se adu. So long. Farewell. A vida se adu. 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 To you and you and you. So long. Farewell. Wait. You got Goodbye. this. Goodbye. Goodbye. No. 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 Out of the box, that one. Uh, oh, so long. Farewell to you, my friends. Goodbye for now. Until we meet again. It's been nice to sing and dance together. In the box. But now it's time to say goodbye. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. I can't do that. Remember. Just, just, uh, well, it's. Rub, snap, clap. Okay, but I, got I have you. the microphone in my hand. Ah, uh, yeah. So, oh, no, oh, that doesn't oh. work. <laughs> there nice, we go. good job. I love that song. I rubbed my tits and it didn't work. Why did I say tits? That's so vulgar. Well, you know, my breast. <laughs> Her breast. <laughs> That's so weird too. I rubbed my chest. Sure, chest. It Let's is. Go with chest. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, then I want my shoulders. And that was the best one. Yeah. That was. And that's a great song. <laughs> let me tell you. There we go. Did I tell you that I made my fraternity sing that to me when on uh, my senior night when I was leaving? Really? Yeah. <laughs> that's so funny. I love that song so much. Like that's sweet. Out of the box is awesome. Out of the box. Out of the box. Here in the box, it's really up to you. What comes out this. of the box? It's I don't intro. know that part. Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, goodbye. Bye everyone. <laughs>